But believe it or not, Brother Joseph, when I used to be in construction, yeah. I remember this very well that I worked for people. And uh, normally you get draw when it's a big job, a big you know, draw, first and second and third and fourth. Normally the last draw is literally is a profit for me. I have four or five guys work for me. Yeah. And all the money comes, the first few draw is to pay for the material, to yeah. pay for the guys working. Yeah. Last draw, which is most, most likely in a job of 15000 is two, three thousand dollars That's cash. My profit. Yeah. You know how many times, even here in America, how many times the builder I work for or the owner of the job I work for, he literally does not pay me the last draw? Mm. Well, the job is finished. Yeah. What do I need it for? Yeah. Okay, we don't have to pay anymore. Thank you. Goodbye. But in mm. the Bible, mm. the, uh, the, the, the Leviticus law, the Deuteronomy law, what the Bible said, you work for somebody, you get paid up front according to the number of years. Yeah. It has to be a fair deal. Yeah. And then when the six years come and he's leaving, don't let him go empty hand. Right. You need to bless him right. with liberty. Right. Uh, that's a very important verse. We just have to read it. Yeah. In Exodus 21, 7 and 8, listen what the Bible said. And by the way, yeah. it is verses which is Muslim take in the West here in America, and they twist it to bring a new teaching out of it, not what the Bible teach. Listen carefully what the Bible said in Exodus 21, 7 and 8. The Bible said, Let's give the audio on our slides. And if a man shall sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. To sell her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. Let me get the rest of the verse. Very important, and we talk about it in totally. The rest of the verse is in verses 9 to 11. The Bible said, And if he had betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. Selling a daughter. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you read this Bible, this verses without the context and what yeah. we'll be teaching right now, you come as a day. People were selling their daughter. Yeah. Remember, every time the Bible talk about selling here, mm -hmm. Hebrew to Hebrew, all this was happening in the Bible. It is not selling slavery forever. Yeah. It is you're gonna work for yeah. this person, and right. the longest you can ever own a person is six years. It is contract. Right. It's literally working. Right. Now, I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna give my daughter to you, okay. and you are gonna pay me for whatever the years, depend how many years right. she's gonna be working for you. Yeah. She's gonna babysit your children, or whatever. Now you can also marry her, mm -hmm. and that's will be the money is gonna be given here as a dowry, or you can also give her to your son. Mm -hmm. Your son will be marrying my daughter, yeah. and also this is a dowry. The money is be given. Now, if you choose not to marry her, mm. you cannot. The Bible said he cannot give her somebody else right so if i am coming to you if i'm giving to you my daughter it is to work for you yeah. or for you to marry her right you cannot give it somebody else or somebody else to marry her but also you can give her to your son if yeah. this is the deal where you're taking my daughter to your son now if your son choose not to marry he's going to marry mm -hmm. somebody else yeah we don't, you don't just say, well, after all, my son is not going to marry her. There's a change of uh, uh, opinion here. My, he, he, he no longer have need for her. So I'm going to sell her to somebody else or I'm going to marry her to somebody else. No, you can't. Mm. You can let her go free to come back to me, but you cannot give her to somebody else. Well, but the, the word selling daughter here, more than yeah. look and say, wait a minute. Here it is, slavery in the Bible. It's mm. the same language, selling daughter, selling son, selling yourself. Mm. That's work work uh, contract mm. it is six years it's not the, the the selling as we understand of black in america 200 years ago how they were buying them slave for life forever okay brother osama thank you for putting all of that out it's very important that people understand that and uh let's go back to ted shubat give him an opportunity to uh, give us some more commentary and thoughts on the subject and then we'll continue with brother osama on through until uh, 8 p.m eastern and we'll go back to brother bruce brother ted are you with us Sir. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Uh, I know you have more to share and uh, any more thoughts on what Osama has to say or, or additions. Go right ahead. Yes, I would, I would first like to say that uh, if Peter is still watching this, um, I know he's not with us right now, but Peter, if you're watching this, um, I think you're, you, you, you talked about how you helped uh, a Christian who was going to be killed by Muslims. 
I believe you're talking about our friend in Pakistan. I believe my father was talking about him last time he was here. But um, I, I remember working with my dad and helping, you know, correspond and, you know, with the rescuing of, of this man. And uh, I remember receiving an email from somebody who said that there's a Pakistani man who was going to be killed under the blasphemy law. Could you please help? And me telling my father about this and, we, you know, working together to get people. And it was amazing that most people, you know, I, I, I emailed many people. Christian, or, you know, Christian organizations, people who worked in Christian organizations, and I asked, and I asked them for help, and most people, actually all of them, none of them wanted to help. All of them were scared yeah. to help. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how, uh, from my father's uh, uh, talking here in ABN, and you, and you watching, a man in Germany uh, volunteered to help, and I thank you very much. Thank God. Thank God. Well, that, that, that really illustrates, uh, Brother Ted, how uh, the Lord is working us together, different ministries, your own and ours, and then just one Christian, not even in a formal ministry in Germany, how God uh, is using all three of us, and in this case, particularly ABN, as the communication network. And, and with God's help, he will be able, he will use ABN to connect you and your father's ministry and other godly Christian ministries that expose Islam with many other individuals and people who need to learn churches uh, so that we can work together and stand together in the body of Christ in unity in the strength of the Holy Ghost in this very difficult days. Thank you, Brother Ted. Go right ahead and continue. You know, it just goes to show you that, um, you know, you don't know what, you know, when you talk on a, on a network like this, like ABN, yeah. you don't know exactly who's listening and who you are influencing. Right, and just right. to show you that what you do in life, you don't know what it could lead to. And there's an old saying, it says, when I, when I walk out of the door from my home, a thousand paths lie before me. It means if I take this path, this path, it could lead to anything. Mm -hmm. So simply mm -hmm. speaking on ABN, it could lead to, to great things, to great influences. Mm -hmm. And I would, like to, I would like to commentate on what we're talking about when it comes to slavery. And yes. you know, in the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, began his ministry in Nazareth with words such as this, I read two quotes from Jesus. Jesus said that, quote, the spirit of the Lord is on me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and to release and release to the oppressed. That was in Luke 4.18. And what's interesting is when we, you know, we look at pagan societies like the Romans, the Greeks, the, uh, the, the Egyptians, we find that, you know, in the Muslim world also, you know, we find that all of them had slavery. Plato himself, uh, his republic, Plato's you know, famous republic, uh, his famous republic was totally based on slave labor. And, you know, and, and what is interesting is uh, when we look at, for example, the words of St. Christosphos, uh, he even said that under Christ, under Jesus Christ, there is no slavery. There is, he even said when you buy a slave, teach him a skill and then free him. That's what he encouraged. Mm. We look at, for example, the Muslim world. And what the Muslim world did when it came to slavery is horrendous. A good example is what, what the Muslim world did when they took over Spain mm. for almost 800 years. Oh, but Ted, don't you know that that was a, a beautiful example of Islamic tolerance and pluralism and peace and kindness? Isn't that the poster child of Western Islamic apologists of what Islam would do for Europe and America today? Right, and there are many liberals out there who say that Muslim Spain was so great yeah. and in Christian uh, civilization was so inferior to it. And they had this, they bring this image that Islamic Spain was a bunch of men sitting on rugs, <laughs> uh, algebra, smoking, <laughs> and, and just having a great time, and, you know, drinking coffee, Turkish coffee. Yeah, must like, be. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, but go ahead anyways and tell us how they're wrong. <laughs> they're wrong because according to the historian, Evariste Le Provencal, he's one of the best, Provencal is one of the best historians on the subject of Islamic Spain. He talks about what the Muslims did when they conquered this, the uh, Toledo, the city of Toledo. And he said, quote, Toledo, which had first submitted to the Arabs in 711 or 712, revolted in 713. The town was punished by pillage, and all the notables had their throats cut. Now, I'm it's sorry, not... Ted, I missed it. Which town was that? Cord Cordoba? What, what town Toledo. was it? Toledo. P Peligo? Toledo. Okay, Toledo. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. It's fine. And he said, uh, he said, all the men, all the notables had their throats cut. 
At 7.30, the Sertagain in Septomnia, near Barcelona, was ravaged and a bishop burned alive. 